Okay, we are in the building. Welcome back to Art Talk with your art instructor, Kevalon. And this is Airbrush Video Class number two of the Art Talk Video Class series. And this is all about the air compressor today. Just like I told you, I was going to bring the air compressor to you that I bought. Now, this came with three airbrushes, as you well know. The three were all Ophir, and Ophir is the brand of this compressor. This is Ophir's logo right here on the compressor. As you can see, the compressor bling blings. It has a little silvery sheen to it, the paint on it. I'm going to break down some of the features now of this compressor and why you should have it okay now this compressor comes with a regulator okay and then it comes with an air tank alright this air tank here is nice because it's auto shut off alright this compressor is automatic shut off now this here this is the front of the compressor okay this is the regulator right here the regulator on the top of this regulator there's a button that you can adjust you can adjust your air pressure with this button okay also this regulator has a meter on it I don't know if you can see this meter here but this meter reads the PSI and the PSI is the pounds per square inch of air that come out of the hose here this is the hose that's hooked to the regulator okay this hose has a tip on it it is standard size this one however I've added a fitting to it and this fitting is a quick connect the quick connect is going to allow you to really move fast when you're painting okay now this quick connect screws in right here on the tip of the hose the hose is connected to the front of the regulator right here okay on the front of this regulator in the tip that's where you screw it in it also comes with a double holster for two guns that holds two guns. It's very nice, this compressor. All of this whole set costs under $200. That's at TCP Global. And I'm assuming that some of you went from class number one, as I advised you, to go to TCP Global, and they have the cheapest starving artist packages for airbrushers okay and the airbrush we're recommending to go with this along with those three brushes you got is the neo this is the neo right here the neo is a dual action airbrush this is the one that was featured in class number one okay now this also has the quick connect on the bottom all right you screw that on the bottom here that's the quick connect alright and I'm moving around so Instagram and YouTube and Facebook can see this alright now this is how the quick connect works you have this here and then you have the gun this goes right into the quick connect hole okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop this in and then you're able to spray when you press down you're gonna get air now dual action again I explained it in class number one but I'm gonna just say it real quick you press down for air and you pull back on the trigger for paint to add it to the air and that's atomizing okay atomization now let's break this compressor down shall we this compressor comes with this tank the tank fills up with air okay the tank on the bottom 
and this is the motor on the top so once this tank fills up with air on the bottom okay this cuts off the motor will cut off once the tank on the bottom fills up with air okay this is the tank right here now I'm gonna let you hear it okay I'm gonna cut it on you just flip the switch here now a lot of people want silent compressors this one is not completely silent however it definitely will be I guess semi silent and you move it away from you the longer your hose is that you get for the compressor the further away you can move this but the power of the auto shutoff is that you don't have to worry about cutting it on and off you don't have to worry about now just cut off obviously but it sounds pretty quiet when it's down on the ground away from you and you're painting this is an excellent compressor to have in your arsenal if you're painting t-shirts or hats or canvases I painted this painting of this beautiful baby girl with the airbrush the neo airbrush and this compressor here okay this is the old fear now I'm gonna turn it around for you and show you another feature that it has okay the old fear this is the logo right here as you can see that's the old fear logo this is the only thing right now that I like that old fear makes because those three brushes that come with this they're mostly backup brushes that's what I'm gonna use them for is backup brushes okay now when you look at the side of this it has a little button on the side this button right here is actually a air release system alright so now this air release button when you pull it it lets air out until the motor cuts back on so now I've cut the motor back on alright I'm gonna let you listen to the motor for a second so you can get an idea along with my voice how loud the motor is or how quiet it is I consider this quiet compared to some compressors now when you say silent compressor online it's gonna cost you a lot of money alright this is one of the least expensive compressors in the world okay I love this compressor and it's basically under two hundred dollars you get three airbrushes with it okay and that's the Ophir compressor now when you talk about I guess the size of it that's a good thing it's very compact I'll put my hand here just to give you a comparison it's just about the size of my hand the width of it okay so that's the the basic width of it and you have the regulator up here you have the holes hooked up here and what I want you to do is get the quick connect system alright this quick connect is definitely gonna help you with your artwork it will help you move faster and everything now this is connecting quickly alright pull this down punch it in and that's it now you have your air you need alright this also which is a nice feature it comes with this button on it which is also a regulator for air pressure so you can control your air a couple of ways that doesn't come with it you will have to buy that separately from TCP Global this is the quick connect system for the airbrush hose okay this is a standard size if it says something different than standard size they do have a millimeter size also you know for the standard it has a size to it but this is standard alright I want you to get that each of these pieces that come with it these pieces here are separate also so you have to buy these and this is actually 
the same size as the airbrush on the bottom so now if you look at it you just push it on there and you screw it on it's very easy don't force anything on these airbrushes or the compressor you don't want to do all of that you just want to make it easy for yourself and that's what I'm doing in this airbrush video series class here at Art Talk with Kevalone your art instructor here what I want to do is make it easy for you to airbrush and to learn and to grow as an artist period because we're going to be doing more than just airbrushing in art talk especially in these video classes alright now what I want to talk to you about is some of the drills that you're going to have to do with this compressor I'm going to move this out the way so we can get busy right here I'm gonna put a piece of paper here alright you can use any type of paper you like it can be anything from copy paper from your copier in your home if you have one or any inexpensive paper that can definitely be arranged if you have some kind of copier that can be used you can also save money using art supplies I mean like school supplies from your children if you go <laughs> if you go to Walmart somewhere and buy school supplies this year you might want to consider buying yourself an extra notebook or something and then you can use that to do your drills on with your airbrush okay now I'm gonna show you on this paper when you pull back a little bit you get a thin line okay you get a very thin line you pull back more you get a fatter line but you always press down now you hear the compressor cut on so you could get a thin line or a fat line if you want alright now some of the other drills you're gonna have to do to get your hand coordinated and get yourself together as far as painting with the brush you want to get alphabets and shapes and things so I'm going to show you what I mean it's A B C D E F okay you get the idea I'm sure you get the idea hopefully you're not seeing this backwards with my camera but that's kind of airbrushing 101 you want to do some circles, some twirls. As you get closer to the paper, you get more control from the airbrush, okay? Now I'll be doing more demos with this brush as we go along. All right? But this is basically how you work this airbrush. And this is the Neo again. I want you guys to do some things with it first. I want you to play around with it get your muscle memory right you want to do some sparks and stars and things you could do that you want to do some dots and also some stenciling that's how you're gonna learn how to airbrush without knowing how to draw that's what I'm gonna show you later is how to airbrush nicely and effectively without even knowing how to draw okay you don't really have to know how to draw in order to airbrush alright so I want everybody to know that hey Nisi how you doing today good to see you I'm glad you joined us here at Art Talk now what we're gonna do here is a little demo and I'm gonna show you a few things that we do with the airbrush especially black right now I have black loaded up alright now the color here is in the bottle this bottle is in the airbrush it's a siphon feed airbrush so you basically you feed it into the brush from the bottle right at the bottom here okay so you're gonna stick this right into the hole and kinda gently wiggle it into the airbrush you don't force it in 
and also get the plastic bottles like I suggested in class number one okay now let's get into it I'm gonna show you how we work the Neo here we have a sketch of a gentleman who actually is resting in heaven right now this is a rest in peace design for a client and I want you all to pay attention as we go into it and I'm going to show you some other things later as we go along okay I hope everybody can see this clearly as we get into this portrait here which I would consider a caricature but a lot of people consider it portraits so let's go when you're painting in black and white you want to take it lightly at first okay what you want to do is you want to kind of stroke lightly with the gun and you're basically going in slowly okay you're going in slowly and you want to shape everything first and then fill things in later okay you're gonna go darker as you go along when you're painting like this okay again this is the Neo the Iwata Neo I want you to know that if you go heavy there's no mistakes in art if you go too heavy too soon which is what I don't want you to do I want you to just go lightly like I'm doing you want to stroke lightly and imitate the shapes of the photo that's basically what you're doing and in these art classes this video series here at Art Talk I'm going to show you all how to do this and much more even if you can't draw you'll be able to do this through stenciling and I'm going to show you stenciling later we'll do stenciling classes later and I want you to know that it's not impossible the airbrush is really intimidating for some people and I understand that but with the right guidance see these people don't have the right guidance I'm gonna show you the real way to do it okay now I'm not using any stencils or anything on this but on some portraits I do and I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't. <laughs> I'm freehanding to show you the power of the Neo. Okay, the Neo brush. And also, in all fairness, let me show you the photo that I'm using. I want you to know this is the gentleman here. Okay. And this is the gentleman here that I'm painting. Alright. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. Okay. I know you see the lady in the photo also may she also rest in peace and this is a memorial portrait that I'm painting here this is a rest in peace portrait okay now you want to get every dimple every nook and cranny in the person's face you want to get it but not too pronounced you want it mellow that's why we're airbrushing it not hand painting it because hand painting does a lot of hard lines and things like that and we don't want really hard lines we want it to be soft so it has a photographic type of effect realism is important in portraits that's the most important thing I'm gonna show you some things I'm gonna be missing from here that are not done with the airbrush and they're done with the paintbrush okay so the paintbrush is combined with the airbrush here at Art Talk. And you are inside the Art Attack studio right now. Art Attack, the meaning of Art Attack is the way I jump right on the painting with confidence. That's an Art Attack. I'm Art Attacking right now. All right? Another meaning of Art Attack is what you catch when you look at artwork or someone painting art your interest in it you just call it an art attack even if somebody comes up to you and asks the price of a painting 
they just caught an art attack. Because they could have been anywhere doing anything, but they chose to be there with you looking at your art. And then if they ask you anything or if they have a reaction of any kind that's positive or negative, they had an art attack. <laughs> that's the meaning, a couple of them, of art attack, okay? I just want you all to know because you didn't know a minute ago. That's what art attack is. So you in the art attack studio. We get down in here. Okay? Now this, paint, this portrait is cooperating because my gun is clean. This gun is clean. Also, I thinned out the paint. Alright? You have to thin out your paint. Now, all of these videos you see on YouTube and on Facebook, and that's Kevalone Art Attack at Facebook, and everywhere it's Art Talk with Kevalone, okay? Now, I'm going to stroke a little bit and get these eyelashes going, and I'm just going to show you how we get little lines going. Okay, if you get closer, you'll have more control. And you just want to stripe it up like that, kind of. And then we're going to dust it in. And if you really want some hard lines, what you can do is you can take the paintbrush and add lines later. Okay, now he has kind of thick eyebrows a little bit in the photo. So you want to imitate that here. Okay, that's what you want to do. You want to imitate everything the way it is in the photo. That's just a little piece of paint in the tip. Just turn it, spray it, and then come on back. Okay? But we basically getting it in. And this is how we do it. This is just one color. Okay? All I have in here is black. And have no fear. Just take your time. If you can draw a little bit, you'll move a little faster than some people. Your learning curve will be a little different from somebody that doesn't draw at all. So, just keep that in mind. If you don't draw, there's techniques that I'm going to show you. And we can do private tutoring through small donations. Nothing huge. Just small donations. We can do little classes at a time. And I can show you all how to build your hobby up and show you information on what to buy and how to do this the proper way so that you can take it out and maybe make a job out of it I'm going to put a little dimple in his chin because it's there on the photo, okay I'm just bringing together his jawline so that it could start looking like him alright once you shape up the head, it starts to come together and look like the person more. Alright? So just keep that in mind. Don't, don't worry about how it looks, how much like the person it looks at first. What I want you to do is focus on your technique and how you're putting the paint down, how you're laying it down on there. Alright? That's what I want you to focus on. As a student in this class, some things I'm saying are to make it easier for you okay this will make it easier for you when you're drawing these portraits and things of people now he has these long sideburns that go down to the base of his jaw right here okay on either side you want to get that in there alright because that's in the photo that's also inside the photo alright you want to get people's ears right and everything don't make people with big Dumbo ears or nothing like that. You want to do it like the photo. I'm kind of getting getting a little jagged edge on the edge of his hair there because that's how it is in the photo. All right? But his hair is white in the photo also. So I'm going to leave it mostly. I'm going to use the canvas color back here to color some of his hair. So I'm going to not tamper with that. All right? too much. We're going to add some shadows to get a little bit of an effect of how his nose is. 
all right now some people and I do it too some people would dust this with all of the color and the gray and everything over and then come back with white and do highlights I would recommend that because it actually comes out looking more like the person and also you have to take the white and clean out for example inside his eyeballs where I'm darkening it now it has to be refreshed and you're gonna bring it back by adding white later okay now all of these videos you see that I'm doing they're gonna be speed versions of these videos alright what I want you to do is watch those as well because as a student you'll enjoy it just seeing it painted rather than any talking there'll be no talking in those and they'll be short those videos will be short alright and you want to make sure everything is even okay with the eyes and the nostrils everything has to be horizontally even so keep that in mind even if you have to take a piece of paper or something and get a measure of it you might want to do that just to see how even you are you just want to measure use different things in your home to help you alright all those things are there to help you you bought them anyway so you might as well use them now I'm going in this ear you want to imitate the ear canal alright just like the photo anything that's in here should be just like the photo and this compressor what I'm going to do like I taught you earlier I'm going to take it outside and I'll show you how quiet it can get that's how quiet it can get I got so lost in it I forgot to do that And you want peace and quiet when you're working. If you have an environment you're in that is not quiet and it's not peaceful for you, I know you can't move right away, <laughs> but try to find an environment where you can paint, okay? And you can create peacefully, all right? Because you want to concentrate on this you don't want to be playing games you want to do more learning and painting than anything that's why I recommend this brush because this brush is user friendly alright we're gonna round out his cheeks here because that's how it is in the photo so you want to run a little circle but keep it blurry keep it far away kinda at a distance so that you can capture some of that softness the softer the brush strokes, I think the more realistic it comes out looking. Okay? You want to have soft brush strokes. Alright? Now, the next piece that I'm going to do for Art Talk on YouTube, I'm going to do a story on Lil Wayne. Wheezy. So, you might want to stay tuned on YouTube for that. And. I'm not sure if I'm going live on Instagram here or on Twitter, but I'm going live somewhere simultaneously like I'm doing right now when I do Wheezy. And that'll be today or tomorrow, I'm not sure. But it's going to be either today or tomorrow. Now the bottom of his ear here, in the photo, is even with the line on the top lip or the line between his lips, okay? So what you want to do is, you want to get the other ear, the bottom, same way, all right? You want it almost at the same, well, actually at the same place that it is on the other side, all right? And any details you don't see in there, don't put them there, because that's not realistic to the photo, to the original photo, okay? You want to keep it true to the photo 
Always study the photo as you're painting. Never start going off on your own. Don't do an I'll be sure and go off on your own, girl. Alright? So all my sisters in the class. I know my niece is watching. So also, shape everything up before you go in and do major shadows and everything, all right? You don't want to start shadowing before you drew out the piece. So by drawing out the piece, I mean all your lineage, all your lines, you want to get everything in place before you start doing all of these round shadows and under the eyes and everything. I pretty much had it sketched out with the airbrush. Then I started doing that. I kind of had confidence in the look. And that's what you want to do. You want to have confidence in the look. Alright? Now sometimes what you might want to do is take a straight edge, like I said, and look at it. But also you could use the edge to line up your lines. Alright? Okay? That's how his eyes a little bit are in the photo. Now you take that line and work it. That's what you want to do. Take that line and work it. Put some pupils in his eyes. Alright. Don't hurt to know a little anatomy when you're doing this stuff. Painting portraits and things. You must know some of the bones and some of the structure. The temple. Where I'm at right now. The forehead. Like this hair, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to wait until I get the face together. So you have to prioritize a little bit on what you choose to paint. Alright? And what order you're going to go in. But um, this gentleman is getting ready to come into the room. He's almost here. And you're going to have fun with these portraits as well. I have fun with this. I have fun talking about it. All of this is something that is teaching me as well. So as you're learning with me, I'm learning with you. So don't think anybody is a master at anything. It's always room to grow, okay? And nobody's better than anybody. Everybody just has levels, okay? I'm at a level. You're at a level. And you're going to change your level. And that's what I'm here to do is change your level that you're at artistically and eliminate some of the learning curve okay because I know airbrush is very intimidating for people you know everybody doesn't airbrush the same alright now again I'm gonna take this piece of paper okay I'm showing you with a piece of paper just to show you how simple it can be the edge of his shirt you wanna protect that cause he has a white dress shirt so that's called masking right there alright you notice how the edge got really sharp alright if you go close you will really get a dark line on this alright now we're gonna separate his hair from his face a little bit by drawing it a little darker line on the edge where the hair stops and the face begins alright now he's a really brown skinned man, he's Nubian man and you want to express that even though you don't have brown, you don't need brown to express that alright so stop playing, make it like it is in the photo, stop playing when you're doing these portraits take it very seriously okay especially if people are paying you which is what I'm going to show you how to do how to get paid with the airbrush not just be a hobbyist if you want to stop at being a hobbyist that's fine nothing wrong with being a hobbyist I know a lot of people like that that want to just learn these techniques from me so that they can do it as a hobby which is cool that's beautiful hobbies are beautiful I have hobbies as well well my hobby actually used to be this now this is more like a job for me and a job I love okay I like getting results and I like doing it so that's a match 
Now see how I'm darkening everything now? You can't commit to the dark part until you get to that point, okay? You want to get to that point, and that's not at the beginning. You want to start darkening as you go along. You don't want to darken right away, all right? Don't jump right into pulling this needle back hard because you're going to get such a huge line that it's going to it's going to really take you somewhere that's irreversible. You can't turn that around unless you use my eraser technique, which is something that takes a little time. And I'll show you guys that in the class as well, all right? But right now we don't need to erase because this is cooperating. It's coming along. So I'm putting in the complexion, kind of, and as, it, as you dust, as you can see with this Neo, when you're dusting the color in, it's very light, okay? This is a very light dusting that I'm doing. So I have a little more control when I'm dusting lightly like this, all right? Now when I go in, I'm going closer, I'm going to draw some lines and some fine hairs with this Neo. And you could see them if you were here. But you'll see it when you do a black and white portrait. And you can do animals like this, you can do anything, flowers or whatever you're into, you can use the airbrush to do it. And I want you to experiment drawing different things other than just people. I specialize in people because I think I've heard through the years that it was hard to do or something or one of the most difficult forms of art was portraits, not landscaping or painting cars or, you know, cars on canvas. Like, you know, how people do artwork of old cars and stuff, you know, all of that. They say, a lot of people said to me, and over time I've heard, that uh, this is the most difficult thing, is the airbrush and faces. And so I combine the two, just for you, so that you can see what's really going on with it. And then if you have guidance, which I didn't have, and you have somebody that did research on the technique and on the whole process, from purchasing the art supplies and tools to basically using them in a practical way and implementing them into your toolbox you really can take it to a new level you know so now we back to this paper alright this paper <laughs> I'm using it as a stencil but really we're going to be cutting stencils later. I'm just trying to show you how easy it can be. Now, you see his edge there on his shirt? What I'm going to do is hold this paper here. This is how the airbrush works. I'm going to dust a little bit on there. Just to show you, you can make a line anytime, any way that you want to. It's a beautiful thing, all right? And I'm only using one edge of the paper, too. I'm going to keep the other edge clean in case I'm really cheap and a really starving artist, then I can use the other edge later. But you just need one edge. That's all you need. Boom. Now, I'm going really, to really quickly hook up his tie. Watch this. I'm going to dust in his tie real quick. Just to give it a little feel like, this, like the photo, okay? This is how the photo is, so... That's what I'm going to throw in there. Now, when you do your sketch, you're only as good as your sketch. The sketch you start with. All right? I'm going to show you all that technique, too. Although, that one is part of the private teaching. That's the private tutoring, coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching that's done through small donations. That's part of the coaching. I'm going to show you exactly how to sketch. All right? So we're reserving that for the students that are actually making donations. 
and we're talking small donations okay this is curved on this edge here so what I'm gonna do is bend the paper a little bit like that right see how I have it curved I have a curve on the paper I'm gonna hold it there and then when I press down it'll stay in place and I'm basically just going to dust a little bit right there just to show you how easy it is alright now I have his suit in here now his suit is on him he was naked earlier now he has a suit on like in the photo so this when you're painting like this if you're comfortable with the process you can do this even in front of people and that's what I want some of you to get over I've had people email me and tell me they don't like to work in front of people and you know I think that people shouldn't intimidate you when they're around I think you should actually be glad that people stop to watch you because like I said earlier they could have been doing anything and like the few people that are here right now I appreciate you taking your time to even be here because like I said earlier you could have been there doing anything now I'm gonna put the little crow's feet in there because they're in the photo a little bit just a little bit this is an older gentleman mature gentleman so I want to reflect some of that and show it in the painting okay now his top lip right there when I darken this these little things like that are gonna make it look more like this gentleman here okay you wanna straighten out the mustache you wanna run it along the same line as the top lip okay this this edge here this mustache should end right up above it you wanna leave a space between like he got a haircut, all right? Yeah. But yeah, hook up his mustache and everything. Now, what I want to get you to see is the difference with a live painting and the actual speed painting when I speed this up on the video. That's going to be interesting to see this painting in three minutes. <laughs> in a couple of minutes or something, all right? Now, what we can do now is we can take this hair and kind of give it a little more effect after I dust a little more on his, on his skin. So I'm just taking this and lightly, ever so lightly, pulling back on the brush, on the, knee, on the trigger. I'm going to darken his nose after. I'm leaving the nose now. I'm letting you know just so you can see the difference in the skin around and his nose. I'm just going to leave that just so you know what I'm doing. Alright? Because if I dust everything real quickly, you won't learn anything. And this is what I'm saying. You want to get it a little darker like the photo. Okay? You want to have a rich complexion just like the photo is. The photo, he has a rich complexion, okay? This is him. Alright? You want to have a rich complexion, even though you don't have brown, you don't need brown to imitate a complexion when you're working with black, alright? This is Art Talk. For everybody that just joined us here, we are in the Art Attack studio. And this is Art Talk with your art instructor, Kevalon. What I'm doing in Art Talk, we talk about interesting people, current events, topics that we feel should be spoken about. Like the next one is Wheezy and how they had a shooting at one of his concerts. And we're going to talk about that because a lot of people are upset about that. All right? That's our next story, and that's going to be on... Art Talk with Artist Kevalon right at YouTube. I'm going to go live and do it. I'm not sure if it's Instagram or Twitter tomorrow, but we're going to do it tomorrow live. Wheezy, the story. Now, 
back to this gentleman here this painting his nose I didn't paint yet just to show you how you can make the complexion rich around the painting okay I left his hair because as you can see in the in the photo his hair is white alright he has white hair see the sideburns coming down his white hair see the white hair how his sideburns are and everything I want you to see that okay that hair has to be imitated over here everything about this gentleman should have been sketched originally okay when you first start you want to sketch every line the lips everything what I do I have a what I call a crucifix technique where I put the face in a crucifix okay that's one of the things I'm gonna be teaching you in the private classes and the private one-on-one -on -one coaching with the small donations I can coach you and if you have any questions about that you could always email me at kevalone at gmail.com and we can set up your private classes okay and I can let you know exactly what's going on all the all the donation buttons and everything are on my YouTube and you can pay that way if it's more comfortable for you or whatever's comfortable for you I have it all set up on there so you can go and look at it if you like now let's color in his nose okay I'm gonna leave a little highlight where I don't color in that part and I just do the rest because that's in the photo anything I mean anything in the photo your homework is to pay attention to that alright any shine in his face you want to leave it now the lazy thing would be just to go right back with white and dust it in these places okay I'm gonna do a little a little hand brushing just to fill in the eyes just so you can see the difference but basically what we're doing here is we're just gonna imitate this photo okay and remember what I said about everything being even everything is even here okay you got both sides of this corners of his mouth here those are supposed to be even alright both nostrils are supposed to be even so you want this to kind of be the same on both sides the bottom of this nostril this hole here should be the same size as this hole that's how you paint faces you have to make everything even because the good Lord gave us everything even alright the corner of his eye here should match the corner of his eye here I'm talking about the level of it you see how they match they both are the same level alright that's how it should be okay this corner of that eyebrow even the eyebrow should be the same here the bottom of his sideburns should match on both sides okay I just want you to be symmetrical with the artwork this collar he has this crooked was crooked on the photo so I had to imitate the photo but some things you want to protect yourself with <laughs> so maybe I should have did that straight I don't know we'll see later it's not a big deal because it's just a collar but it makes a difference to me alright now let's play with the hair alright we're gonna do some things with his hair just a little you wanna just take and just swing little circles but you don't wanna keep the pressure on the trigger you wanna go in and out in and out and I'm sweeping to my right a little bit I'm just making little dots kinda but they're kinda curly curls also in there and that's how you get the effect of the edge of the hair cause even though it's white the gray in it kind of shows in dark areas if you're not in the sunlight or something you're gonna see at the root that you have a little darkness to the white hair and that's kind of what I'm doing here what I'm imitating here so you want to do little circles and the Neo can achieve that now I left one side clean so you can see the difference of what we did here alright 
And I'm going to have you guys playing around with things. You know, you can do Spongebob or cartoons or whatever you want to do that you're comfortable with, all right? Look how, look how nice this gun is with the fitting. Now, what I meant by this quick connect system, the quick connect pops right off. It pops right off the gun, all right? That's what I want you to go to TCP Global and get. When you get everything, when you order this brush from there, even if you get it from Hobby Lobby somewhere, order this piece. It's a quick connect. It's a standard size. It screws right into your hose, okay? It screws right into your hose. And I want you to get it. But what I'm going to show you right now is that when you have the air going, okay? Can you hear the air? When you turn this, you can control if the air comes out slow or if it comes out heavy from here so if you have your compressor way out there somewhere like I do now you can actually regulate the air from here I have the button pressed down that's a unique apparatus to add all right to your hose I really like that and thank you TCP Global for showing me that because I didn't know anything about that. These are new things now that they have. They didn't have that in the 90s. They didn't have that in the 80s. I've been spraying since 1988, okay? When they had one type of airbrush. <laughs> so I'm showing you everything from trial and error that I went through, all right? That you don't have to experience. You can experience the good part. When we're going to get to the good part. Ugh. Ah. All right. Now, here we go. That's the edge that I'm talking about. Now, that added a softness to the piece that's very nice, I think. I think that is an awesome type of representation from the hair that's in the photo. These edges here, as you get closer to his forehead, that's how it gets darker and darker as you get closer to his forehead okay now we're gonna get to the good part I'm gonna show you a little something that you'll be doing later as a student in the art talk video series airbrush class I told you it's a combination of things that we use alright to achieve different effects I know that his eyes are not this dark, okay? He's not a zombie or anything. So I want to show you how you can achieve some of the realism from the photo on this piece right here with just a paintbrush and an airbrush. Now I'm taking out the fine brush. What this is, it's a kit. I showed you in class number one, there's an affordable pack of paintbrushes, all right? What I prefer is the nylon. What you want to get is the nylon. Okay? These brushes come, it's a series of brushes in here. Fan brushes, everything. You'll see videos on YouTube where I'm painting an Escalade on a t-shirt. And I'm using the Bob Ross technique to do it. It's a real powerful technique. You'll see in the video. It's a speed, it's a speeded up video, okay? But I'm using this brush. Today I'm using this little brush, all right? Today I'm using the skinny brush here. But on that video, which I encourage you to go see, whether you're a student or not, you're going to enjoy it. I'm using this to do trees in the background, okay? I'm going to use it today to do a little hair on this gentleman here, little effects on his hair, all right? But right now, what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of white paint in this cup here. And I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and go in on his eyes. I'm looking at the photo. The inner part of his eye is bigger than the outer part, all right, on the photo. So you want to take the white and kind of lightly dust it in there again you want to be even alright you want to try to be even where it lands if one is higher 
make the other one lower make it even and you can see how well actually let me put it back I'm gonna do one here just to show you the difference then I'll do the other one how about that and this is very light I'm going very light okay because I don't want to commit too early just like when earlier I was drawing it out okay when I was drawing it out earlier it actually was coming together darker and darker it gradually got darker and darker alright now one thing you want to do is the whites of his eyes never stop the painting until you see the whites of his eyes also realistically there's got to be a light in the room so you want to do a little highlight inside the eye in the middle somewhere in the middle or to the side there's always a highlight in people's eyes so you want to reflect that in the painting okay and that's what I'm doing right here so I put a little highlight in the middle of his eye now you see the difference in the two eyes now you can kinda see how dark this is versus how light this eye is alright in the middle I have a highlight then I did on each side the white of his eyes around the pupil or around the circular part of the eye where the color is alright now we're gonna get on the other eye cause he does have two eyes so we're gonna go right here and come right over and you wanna start where that one started alright no matter what's going on always do that always go where the other one was so that's there that's there alright then you want to keep that same energy over here alright keep that same energy right there so the same thing going on here is going on over here okay and if you want you can measure the size of the pupils if you want and I'll show you all those techniques in the coaching class the one-on-one -on -one class when you go one-on-one -on -one, you don't make a big donation you just make a small donation and we can set it off that way alright and now it's starting to look a little more like him due to the white in his eyes I think that's helpful in the painting alright he's coming together I made him smiling too okay now we're gonna get on the hair the way we're going to do the hair today, I'm going to show you with the fan brush, all right? We're going to use the fan brush. I'm going to dip it down in here a little bit, and just to get it wet a little bit, I'm spinning it in here, okay? I'm going to spin it in here. You want to tap it on something just to get an idea of how much paint is on there because you don't want to go crazy. But I'm going to start at the top, and you want to go from the side a little bit and just tap okay you just want to tap this brush is made for tapping okay turn it turn it to the side the long way like that and go in like that if you need more paint you don't see it happening for you then get some more paint alright just don't drip none on your piece Cause that's embarrassing if you're in public somewhere but if you were here you could see how his hair is coming along you can really see some of the differences already in his texture in his hair now you see where this is missing a little bit on that side where this came and got like it came together here with the black and here I went too heavy with the black so what you want to do is separate it a little bit you want to separate it a little bit is that time rins what's up time rins we got rob c1 yeah thanks for joining us here at art talk we're gonna be doing a piece like this every week alright
Now this is coming together. This is what I was saying about the fan brush. The power of it is that you can turn it any kind of way. You can put a little bit of paint and go a long way with it if you like. But texture is what you're imitating with this brush. Okay? Texture. Now you can see it separating. Okay? And this is basically how you begin with the portrait like this. You really have to go in and do a lot more. I'm just showing you guys some basic techniques really fast because I know you don't have all day to watch this. And if you do, I appreciate you watching it over again. But this is basically it. All right. The front has to be a little more pronounced because that's where the light probably is hitting it the most based on the photo. But you want to get your edges right to show that white hair. Okay? The white hair is very unique. He's a very handsome guy. So you want to get it in there. You want to imitate it as best you can. You want to imitate life as best you can. You can take your finger and smooth it out if you want. If you go too hard in the area. These are acrylics. They're fast drying. That's why I recommend acrylics. Okay? And you'll learn that in the class. And if you're going to purchase this, go to TCP Global. Okay? And if you email me at kevalone at gmail.com and let me know what kind of donation you're doing and what you actually want to achieve we can do that and we can start your private coaching right away I give you almost 24 hour assistance as a student because I do have to sleep sometime but basically you can call me anytime if you have any problems any issues any questions you can email me call me Messenger, we use Messenger a lot. We go live on Messenger a lot, okay? So, this gentleman is coming along. I think you get the basic technique from this. And this is a black and white. This is the basic technique we use in the Art Talk series, too. So, everything is black and white and one color usually on there. This one is a personal painting for someone. So I'm adding different effects to make it the way it's supposed to be, okay? That's what we're doing today. Now I'm going to take a little bit of paint off here, all right? And make some whiskers on this gentleman because also his mustache has white in it. So we're just going to take and just lightly stroke some whiskers in there. Okay, I hope you can see that. and it's gray so I wanna kinda get the gray going and then later I'm gonna do a little airbrushing and get some of these effects as well alright but this is it right here you wanna curl it you wanna go up maybe down whatever stroke you can get from this angle the stroke I'm getting is going down that's my best stroke from this angle but you want to try to go up and down because hair is going different directions. But as you can see, that's kind of what we want right there. All right? Now, I'm going to show you another thing. <laughs> this is the exciting part is seeing it in color. Because apparently, I've already painted this gentleman right here in full color okay there's a sample of him in full color I just want you to check it out and show you how far it can go and how the techniques really go far as far as the neo and the acrylic paint and everything I just want you to see that alright that's how we do it here in the Art Attack studio this is the photo, the original photo that came from this, okay? 
This is a commission portrait from a client. This is a rest in peace portrait. Okay? I want you to see the quality of the portrait next to the photo. That'll give you an idea of how far you can go with the Neo and with that old fear compressor. That old fear compressor is serious. So I want you to go out and get it. Go to TCP Global. And if you want to know what kind of paints and everything, all of that is in the private sessions. A lot of the different techniques are in the private sessions. As you can see, this is the strokes on the the hair, the the mustache, on the sideburns, even on his eyelashes and inside the eyes. I wanted to show you the highlights. Now on his eyelid there and on his nose, those highlights were done with the airbrush and the gray hairs here and all in his eyelashes and everything, those were done with the paintbrush. The little one I showed you. Okay? So like a cowboy had two guns on his holster we have two ways that we get our major effects in these paintings alright so I'm gonna do a paintbrush segment one day in class number three that will be a paintbrush segment but until then I want you to check out the fast escalade painting done on a t-shirt with the Bob Ross technique okay the trees in the background of the escalade were done with the Bob Ross technique and that's with this fan brush and again it comes in a value pack usually that's at Michaels or at um, Hobby Lobby you could order this at TCP Global you could order it at any art supply place you can buy these and this one came with a zip it has a zipper thing on it it's very nice you can reinsert your brushes into it after you rinse them off and clean them well you want to take care of your brushes these are white remember get the white nylon alright don't get camel hair or horse hair or if it's brown run from it if it's doo doo brown run from it alright get the white brushes those are nylon and they're also made for acrylic paint okay if it says acrylic on it and it's white grab it it should be nylon but I want you to read I want you to investigate I want you to be smart about it I want you to have fun and easy airbrushing is what I'm gonna show you how to do you're gonna have fun implementing these techniques and some of the things I'm showing you here at Art Talk with your art instructor Kevalon okay so until we go live again until the next class which is number three it's going to be about paint brushes number one was about airbrushes okay that's the fundamentals you need to have the first class before you can get to the third class so if you haven't then go by all means check out those videos at YouTube it's called the channel is art talk with artist Kevalon and you'll see all the videos there alright that's the home of all the videos thank you very much for joining us and happy painting and airbrushing to you peace